there are some things that once you get old, you realize those are only for young people, right? Like drinking multiple energy drinks and staying up all night. And you should enjoy those things now because trust me, one day you wake up and your whole body hurts because you mowed the grass the day before, right? It's, it's, all, it's downhill from there. No, but, but seriously, make the most of this time in your life because there are some things you can only do while you're young. Now, you know this, and that's why you can get away with staying up so late even when you have to be up so early, uh, hanging out with friends when you're supposed to be studying, right? Eating 10 bags of Takis and washing it down with four Red Bulls, <laughs> freshman. Uh, listen, listening to music and going to concert and screaming your lungs out so that you can't even hear the person performing, right? Maybe that's just me. Sending ridiculous memes to each other, dressing up for spirit day, finding time for little adventures like meeting up and watching the sunset on the beach with your friends. And the point is that we all know there will be a time when life is not like that, right? Our friends won't necessarily live nearby us and our stepmom won't always be buying the groceries. So for now, let's make the most of the days being young one but isn't it true that we also use that same logic to do some stuff that we know we probably shouldn't do when i was a teenager my friends and i used to have lan parties right and that's basically an all-night computer gaming session so back in the stone age when i was young online gaming wasn't really a thing so to play games with your friends, you had to all connect your computers to the same network. So we would stay up, we would eat freezer pizzas and Doritos and drink many, many, many two liters of Mountain Dew. And we would run around the computer world shooting bad guys and each other and generally talking trash. And we would go to sleep around... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We never went to sleep. We stayed up all night long, right? Just games all night long. And the thing is, I generally had a soccer game the next day or had to cut the grass or whatever, right? But did that stop me? Nah. Uh, oh, I was, I was always tired, right? And I always regretted it afterwards. But man, in the moment, it was so worth it. So now, 40-something-year-old me just like cringes at the thought of having less than an hour of sleep and then having to do like anything. But 15-year-old me did it every chance I got. You're only young once, right? Yo-yo? Was that a thing? Uh, <laughs> no, but but come on. I, I can't be the only person in history who has had this thought, right? Haven't we all been there? Maybe, maybe we're not pony noobs at 3 a.m., but we say things like, well, I'm only young once, and then we, what? We make our friends laugh by making fun of other people. Or we... We get lazy or just distracted and we skip studying. We drive too fast in a way that's unsafe. We get drunk at a party. We gossip about other people. Maybe we hook up with somebody impulsively. We send pictures that we know could hurt other people or even hurt your, our own reputations. Look, please hear me. N none of this is to put shame on anybody if you've done any of those things, look, trust me, you're not the only one who has, okay? I'm just saying that sometimes being young feels like a good excuse to experiment. Being young is like you get a pass to do whatever you want in the name of uh, living and learning, right? I mean, honestly, when we're testing out a little bit of trouble, we can, at least for a moment, feel pretty powerful, right? Besides, you're only young once, but but what if there's more power in being young than in testing boundaries? Now, last week, we started this series by talking about a couple of guys who lived a long time ago. Their names are Paul and Timothy. And even though they lived a long time ago, you actually have something in common with Timothy. Timothy was young like you are. By the standards of the day, Timothy was very young when Paul, who was one of the most influential Christian leaders to ever live, invited him to lead other people. See, Paul used to travel around and tell people about how Jesus died and then came back to life. 
And for a while, Timothy went on those trips with Paul. And as they traveled, Paul mentored Timothy as a follower of Jesus and a leader until one day in a town called Ephesus, Paul put Timothy in charge of the entire church there. So that meant that many people, younger and older than Timothy, would be looking to him for leadership. And as Timothy led, Paul would write him letters to encourage him and help him know how to lead well. Those letters are now called 1st and 2nd Timothy, and they're part of the Bible. Now, thankfully, you and I can read them, and we can learn so much about what being young can be like for followers of Jesus. So check out this one statement Paul makes. That's the, this is the, the big idea that our entire series is focused on. And he writes this, Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. That's 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. See, Paul understood that Timothy was not a leader for later. He wasn't in a someday when you grow up, God will use you kind of situation. No, God had something incredible and important for Timothy to do right then, while he was still young. That's why he was adamant that Timothy should not let anyone look down on him or set a low bar for him. Instead, he was supposed to be a positive example for other people. In order to do that, in order to help him do that, Paul wrote some advice a little bit later into his letter, and that proves to be very helpful for us today. Paul wraps up his first letter to Timothy, and he reminds him of the huge responsibility that he has. He says, Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to your care. Turn away from godless chatter and the opposing ideas of what is falsely called knowledge. And that's 1 Timothy 6, verse 20. There has been some debate about exactly what Paul was referring to when he says, what has been entrusted to your care. But essentially what he's saying is, hey, Tim, man, look, make sure that you represent the message of Jesus well to the people and the community around you. Make sure that the way you live, the way you lead, and the way you conduct your personal life when no one is watching, line up with what you believe. Make sure that you keep people focused on what God said was true about life, was true about God, and what about he, about what he says is best. Timothy had huge responsibility. And Paul wanted to make sure that he understood the significance of what he was doing. At the same time, Paul also wanted him to turn away from the things that could distract him from what was best. Things like godless chatter and things that people called knowledge, but that were really just a waste of time. Just like there are so many arguments and opinions about what's best and what's true and what we should do with our lives today, there were the same challenges 2,000 years ago. There were all sorts of ideas about what their best life was supposed to look like. And Paul was simply telling Timothy, focus on what you know to be true by following the ways and teachings of Jesus. In other words, Paul was saying, listen, I want more for you than what's common, Timothy. It wouldn't make you a bad person if you did whatever you wanted to with your years of being young, but I believe God has something more powerful for you to do right now. And what God has for you is too important for you to get distracted. Here's the thing. The same statement is true for you. Maybe... Maybe you've never thought of it that way, right? But God has a purpose for your time in high school. God isn't waiting till you graduate or get married or get a career to use you to impact the people around you. God has work for you to do now. In fact, the work that God has for you in high school, you can only do while you're young. You're only young once, which means these years of high school are years that you won't ever get back. And I highly doubt that God would just want you to wander through those years without any experiencing any, anything significant, right? Or without helping other people in significant ways. You have an amazing opportunity to change the course of the lives of people around you by serving them and encouraging them. If we're paying attention to Paul's advice, I think this mission is too important to get distracted by gossip, laziness, treating others poorly, wasting our time, or living irresponsibly. Now listen, I want you to hear me, okay? 
this does not mean that you're not supposed to have fun, right? Not at all. But it does mean that while you're having fun, it's also important that you remember there are some things you can only accomplish while you're young. You don't want to miss out on, on what God can do in and through you in your high school years. You get to decide what your years of being young will be about. You get four years. That's 209 weeks of high school. Sounds like a lot, right? But it's not. And no matter how you use your time, you don't get those 209 weeks back. The important thing to remember is that you are the one who gets to choose. And it might not feel like it all the time, especially when your coach or your boss or whoever is, is telling you what to do. But ultimately, the story of these four years of your life will come down to how you spent the majority of your time. Maybe you'd rather spend more time investing in your financial future, so you choose to work more. Maybe your friendships matter a lot to you, so you spend a lot of time hanging out. Maybe you're trying to build a habit of serving other people, so your volunteering tends to get a significant amount of your time. Honestly, there are so many good things you can invest your time in, right? Now, of course, we can also easily spend our time on things that might not matter as much. But the beautiful thing is, you get to choose. I want you to hear this. You get to decide what your years of being young will be about. So, will they be about making an impact or something else? Will they be about taking your potential to make a difference seriously? Or will they be about the distractions that get in our way so easily? You have more power than you might think. You're only young once, so make it count. Now, by now, you know that these years can be really special, right? And that's only part of what we're talking about today. If you're really going to experience everything that God has for you in high school, then it's important that you take Paul's advice seriously and put his words into action. Now this week, you can start living the life that is uniquely yours while you're young. Even if you're not sure what all this Jesus stuff is, I would guess that you want to get the most out of your life. My guess is that you would want your younger years to be great years. So whether you're still figuring out how you feel about all this church stuff, or if you've been a Christian for a while, here are a couple of steps that you can take to head in that direction. Okay. For starters, ask God, what do you have for me? Right. Spend some time thinking, praying, maybe even uh, journaling about what God might do through you in high school. How would God use you to impact your friends, your family, your teachers, uh, older people, younger people, your community? What gifts has God given you right now? What influence do you already have? Where has God placed you, right? What's your unique position in the world? Think about all these things and ask God to show you how he might want to use you to make an impact over these special years. If you're not sure where to begin with this, listen, talk to your small group leader, okay? They might be able to see some potential that you're struggling to see in yourself. If you're not sure you want to follow Jesus, maybe your first step is to talk to your small group leader about the kind of life Jesus offers us. See, Jesus came so that you could have the best kind of life possible as a high schooler and afterwards. So what if this is really what God has for you? Wouldn't that be worth exploring more? Right now, whether you're a Christian or whether you're new to all of this or, or whatever, take some time this week and I want you to ask God, what do you have for me? Then you're going to evaluate what are you up to right now? You can do that by asking yourself a really simple question. How would my words, my actions, my habits, or my friends, how might those things be distracting me from what God has for me? And listen, I know this is tough, but it's important. It's so important. Be honest with yourself. If you have a hard time with that, ask a small group leader or a trusted friend to be honest with you. Just know that no matter how hard it may be to be honest about where you're at, what God has in store for you is worth the honesty. 
This isn't about you feeling shame, never having fun, uh, suddenly dropping everybody from your life, but this is about you evaluating the reality of your current high school experience so that you can begin to have the best high school experience possible, or even better, the best life possible, right? So evaluate what you're currently up to and then start to head in the direction of what God has for you. When you decide to take those steps, you will be deciding that you want your years of being young to be about all that God has for you. God is not waiting on you to grow up so that you can begin to experience what he has for you. No, God takes you seriously right now. And so does every adult in the room. We believe that your generation is the best generation. And we've already seen God do incredible things in you and through you all. And we believe that he is just getting started. We believe that you can impact your school, you can impact your community, and you can impact your family, and you can impact us in incredible ways. Not just now, but and not just later, but you can start right now. And these years of your life can be full of impact. There are some opportunities and some challenges, and they only happen when you're young. So when you get older, don't forget what this feels like. Remember that you get to decide what your years of being young will be about. So think about this question this week. What do you want your high school years to be about?